Hi, it's John Glynn. Uh, today with the um, tutorial in Photoshop Elements 20, I'm going to be looking at the paint bucket in your toolbox. So there's a paint bucket is under the draw options. Click on it once and you'll see the word paint bucket tool appearing and the shortcut is K, letter K to get to that. Um, and uh, I've put a picture into Photoshop and I'll click on paint bucket again and you'll see the options appear below the photograph uh, relating to the, the choices, things you can do, choices you have with regarding to the paint bucket. And if you put your mouse over the top of your photograph uh, you will see a little paint bucket okay, as your symbol. Um, in the stuff below you have the basic paint option um, and in that you have opacity and you've got tolerance so I'm going to start on that. I'm, the very first thing I'm going to do just make it a bit more interesting and uh, whatever I'm going to change the colour of my paint. So it will choose the top paint, the black, and we go to that. I've just clicked on it once and it should open up a, a window like this. You've got a choice of colours that you can choose from by the slider. Just move your mouse up and down the slider with the left mouse key. I'm just using a PC with a standard mouse, nothing clever here. And um, I can choose green. Put my mouse inside, see my little brush inside the um, or cursor rather than inside the colour. Click once with the left mouse key and I now have the new colour which is green and the previous colour, what we call current colour, is black. I just say OK and now I have green as my paint bucket colour. Um, when we're working with a paint bucket, I'm just going to show you the basic process. Um, we have a thing called opacity. So I click on the, the sky and you can see that portions of the sky are coloured green. If I change the opacity from 100% opacity and reduce it to say 40 or 50% and click again, you can now see that you get a lighter shade of green and some of the previous colour, the colour that's underneath your uh, picture will start to come through. So opacity impacts the strength of the colour and allows the original colour, in this case the bluish sky, to also come through on, on the colour that I'm using. So that's opacity. Um, I'll undo that. I can just do undo undo from the bottom. And I've got tolerance. At the moment tolerance, if I just click again with the left mouse key, tolerance uh, is how many shades of the same colour over the photograph it will pick up. So the greater the tolerance, the more colours or tonal ranges it will include. It will, that it will include within your selection. So if I undo and up the tolerance, I now click with the left mouse key, uh, you can see that it's included nearly the whole picture. So there's the tolerance in that um, is very high. So in that case, undo, lower it again, and try again. And you'll see that each time you do the tolerance, and I lower it, I'll go back all the way down, it will use up, it will include fewer and fewer tones. Okay, so tolerance is related to the tonal ranges that your um, particular colour will, or your paint bucket will pick up on on your tonal ranges. Okay, basically, so the, the fewer you have, the more precise your tones will be that it chooses to pick up. So if I undo, I'll undo that, and undo that, and do it again. I've reduced the tolerance still further. Okay, so, if, and if you reduce it still further, it's at number 19 at the moment, but if I drop it right the way down to, say, 4, it chooses very, very small tones based on what I just clicked on with my paint bucket. Okay, so it's very precise in that case. Now, the other thing to look at is uh, modes, normal mode, and see what we have here. These are ways that the the paint bucket will react 
or relate to, not react to so much as relate to the picture below. So you're basically painting paint over the top. So by changing the way that this um, this paint bucket reacts to or impacts with your picture, you can get a different sort of look. So at the moment I'm just using normal, but if I do overlay and then chose to do the paint bucket, it gives me a different interrelation, a different relationship with the original photograph. It even changes the shade of green. Uh, I could do, um, I don't know what vivid light will do. So it's a matter of just trying them out and it kind of gives me a different shade of green yet again. Um, you could try hue. That may not have much effect. Okay, <laughs> what about um, saturation? Uh, and things like that. So it's a matter of trying. You have to do it before you do the bucket. You can't change it after the effect. So I can't now go back in and say, oh, let's do overlay. It doesn't do anything because um, you have to do it before you do the effect. Okay, so if I want something to be done, I'll undo everything. If you do lots and lots of things as I have done now, it's quicker to go to the history panel on the right hand side. If history isn't open, then that will be under window history. And if you see if it's got a tick, it's open and if it's unticked, it isn't. You just click it with the left mouse key and it will open here. And what you can do is use a slider, go back to the very beginning. There's the word open. Click on that with the left mouse key, click the right mouse key, clear history, say OK, and you're back to square one. It's quicker than doing undo, undo, undo if you've done lots. So um, let's just up the tolerance slightly and uh, do these again. So if I wanted to do, um, I'm just going to have to guess at what these can do. I'll try a difference and you get a different colour. Okay, with green, even as a green ink, by using difference it changes its relationship with the picture and the colour. Okay, but if I had just done a normal colour, so if I go to normal and click green and then go down to the choices under mode and say um, difference nothing happens because I've done it after after the painting. It's not like a selection so you can't change it afterwards you have to do it beforehand. Okay so just be aware of how this tool is actually working. So I'll go back to normal and undo that one as well. Okay so uh, contiguous at the moment when I click on my uh, picture with this particular paint bucket you'll notice it also goes behind the bridge and and impacts quite a lot of the picture area so let's undo that and instead of having it I'm going to click this little box here on the right hand side at the bottom next to tolerance you've got cho choices all layers and contiguous I don't have anything in layers I've only got one picture so it'll be contiguous I click that and then paint it now doesn't go behind the bridge. So it's only impacting areas up to a given line, if you like, within your photograph. So if, if um, even if I up the tolerance slightly, let's undo that one, up the tolerance slightly and then click with the green, click in that picture of the sky, it's picked up a bigger area, um, but it still doesn't include the bridge. If I up the tolerance a bit more, Maybe not that much. You can see that uh, maybe I'll to add. There we are. I've added to it. It doesn't go beyond a border. So behind the bridge, onto the water, all of that is not included. Well, if I undo all of this and untick contiguous, so it's no longer ticked, and click with the left mouse key now, you can see the difference very quickly it includes behind the bridge and other parts of the picture are also included because when you when it's contiguous it's only impacting immediate pixels next to it 
when it's not contiguous. It, in, it includes pixels all over your picture of the same tonal range. Okay, just be aware that that's what it's doing in the paint bucket. Okay, so it's worth practicing all of this just so that you get an understanding of what they do. Uh, you'll notice if you've used other tools that some of these things like contiguous and non-contiguous will appear in other tools as well and work in principally the same way. Okay, and the other thing we've got here uh, next to the paint is a thing called pattern. In pattern we have different ways. You've got default shapes and patterns but if you do the drop down menu there's a whole load of other patterns, rock patterns. These may be useful in some pictures especially for backgrounds. Grayscale paper, uh, textured um, but a lot of this is also for um, graphic applications rather than photographic applications so you may find that you don't want to to be using them in photography but it's worth knowing about them anyway and you may find that at some stage you do want to use them as part of a, a design in a, a birthday card or something like that again you just use it the same way as you would do with the paint bucket um, you can choose a, a pattern put your mouse over the top of your picture and you've got the paint bucket still click once with the left mouse key and I now have that pattern dotted all over the photo. Everything else works in the same way with patterns. So it, once you've learnt the basic principles of using a paint bucket, the pattern will be the same idea. Uh, there is a little drop down menu on the right hand side of pattern. There's options here to load your own patterns. Okay, so you may be photographed pebbles or something that you would like to make a pattern with. You can load them in uh, and create your own patterns as well. So they don't have to just use the ones that are already preloaded. Okay. Um, it's a matter of trying them, just get an idea of what they do. But uh, generally speaking, we would use a paint bucket in photography rather than the patterns, but you never can tell and it's worth knowing about them. And basically that they they kind of work in the same way as a paint bucket. Okay, so have a go with paint bucket again, just to get an understanding of the process and what it's doing. And, uh, and it's all about practicing really. So thank you very much for, for watching.